Today on State of Charge, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about charging the Porsche Taycan. Now the Porsche Taycan is one of the best electric vehicles available today. But many people don't realize it also has one of the best charging capabilities of any electric vehicle available. We're gonna go over home charging. We're going to talk DC fast charging. We're even gonna tell you how you can use a Tesla wall connector or a Tesla destination charger to charge your Porsche Taycan. Now, one thing we need to note, this is market specific. Uh, we're talking about the North American market here because charging in Europe is a little bit different than it is here. So this is really specific for the North American market. Before we get started, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. So before we do a deep dive into Tycon charging, I want to explain electric vehicle charging in general briefly, uh, just so people have a general understanding of the different types or levels of charging. There's basically three levels of charging an electric car. The first level is level one charging, and that's when you charge your electric vehicle from a regular 120 volt household socket. Now, the Porsche uh, Charge Connect comes with an adapter that allows you to plug in your Taycan to a regular 120 volt outlet. Uh, and it will charge your car, but it will take a long time because the Taycan has a very big battery. Uh, either the 93.4 kilowatt hour battery or the uh, smaller battery, the 79 kilowatt hour battery, are gonna take really long to charge your car. Uh, that's because you get somewhere around one kilowatt uh, of energy delivered to the vehicle per hour. So you can multiply that out depending on which battery you have. It can take somewhere between 75 to 85 hours to fully charge a Porsche Taycan from a level one source. So most Taycan owners are gonna elect to go for faster charging at home. Uh, that would be level two charging, which uh, is from a 240 volt outlet. Uh, the, the Porsche Charge Connect that comes with the vehicle uh, has adapters for either 120 volt outlet or a 240 volt outlet. The 240 volt outlet adapter they give you is a NEMA 1450 plug, and that goes into a NEMA 1450 outlet. NEMA 1450 outlet will be uh, wired to a 50 amp circuit. And in that case, you can deliver up to 40 amps of power to the car, which is what the uh, Charge Connect and the basic Porsche uh, uh, charger, mobile charger that comes with the vehicle can deliver. It can deliver 40 amps, which is 9.6 kilowatts. So as you can see, it's nearly 10 times as fast charging from a level two source than it is from the level one source, even using the same charger that comes with the car. It depends on where you're getting your power from. Now you can install a uh, NEMA 1450 outlet in your garage. Uh, you have an electrician do that. It shouldn't be more than a few hundred dollars. Uh, although it can be more expensive if your house is at its capacity and can't add another circuit. So I always recommend that before you even buy an electric car, any electric car, have an electrician take a look at your service in your house and make sure you can add that extra circuit to charge your electric vehicle. If you can't, there are circuit splitters you can buy like the split volt or neo charge that allows you to share a circuit with an existing appliance like an electric uh, range or an electric dryer. Um, but that's a, another topic. I have videos here on the channel that explain those and, and I'll put links to them in the description of this video. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna assume that you can install a NEMA 1450 outlet in your garage and use uh, the Porsche's charging equipment or equipment from a third party vendor. Uh, any electric car charger will sold in North America will charge the Porsche Taycan. They all use the J1772 connector. Uh, so that's level two charging. Uh, level three charging, loosely called level three, it's actually called DC fast charging. That's ultra high speed charging that you do uh, not in your home. You can't have a DC fast charger in your house unless you want to spend you know 50 or sixty thousand dollars almost as much as the car to, to have it installed uh, but it's 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 senseless you really have no need to do that level two charging will charge the Taycan overnight 
uh, even if your battery was completely drained. But DC fast charging is what you do on the road. They have DC fast chargers set up along major corridors and highways all across the country. Uh, Electrify America and Electrify Canada are two of the biggest DC fast charge networks in North America, and they're setting up nationwide coast-to-coast -coast networks so you can take your Tycon anywhere you'd like to go. Uh, they have these ultra-fast DC fast chargers that uh, the stations are either 150 kilowatts or up to 350 kilowatts. And that's good for the Tycon because the Tycon has really robust DC fast charging capabilities. Because it has an 800 volt battery system, it can accept up to 270 kilowatts. Now, comparing that to say a Tesla vehicle, and Tesla usually gets compared to everything because they are a benchmark for electric vehicles. They're doing a lot of things right, and they had a head start on most of the uh, legacy OEMs. Uh, the fastest Tesla right now can only charge at 250 kilowatts. I say only, that's really fast, but the Taycan can charge faster. It can charge up to 270 kilowatts. In order to do that though, the battery temperature has to be just right. It has to be at about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Taycan has a display that allows you to show the battery temperature if you'd like. You go into the settings, you tick that box, and then you can see the battery temperature on your display. And You'd want to see that if you want the optimum charging speed for your Tycon when using a DC fast charger. Uh, number one, you have to have a DC fast charger that can deliver that much power. Most of the DC fast chargers in the country are either 50 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts. But at every Electrify America station now, at most Electrify America stations, they have at least one charger that's a 350 kilowatt charger. So you'd want to take a look at your Electrify America app before you go to the charging station, see if they have a 350 kilowatt charging station. They're, all the stations are listed on the app, very easy to understand. And if you don't do that, when you pull up, all of the stations have stickers on them and you can see if it's a 150 kilowatt station or a 350 kilowatt station, you wanna pull into the 350 kilowatt station. Getting back to the battery temperature, uh, if you notice that your battery isn't warm enough to take the the maximum power, uh, it's not a problem. The car will just charge a little bit slower. It might make the difference of you being at the DC fast charger for five minutes more, that's it. Uh, but if you really wanna nerd out and get the top charging speed that you can, you wanna get your battery temperature up. If it's cold out, how do you do that? Uh, there's only really one, well, there's two ways. You can drive the car really hard and that will warm up the battery, or you can set in your navigation system the, your, as your destination being the DC fast charger. When you do that, the car says, okay, he's going to a DC fast charger and I want to warm up the battery so it can accept the, mo the most power and we can get the vehicle in and out of there as quickly as possible. So when you set the DC fast charger as a destination, the car starts to immediately pre-warm the battery. It tries to get it up to the optimum charging temperature. Now, it depends on how early you set that. If you set it and you're only 10 minutes away from the charger, it probably won't get it all the way up, but it will increase the battery temperature and it'll make your charging a little bit quicker. Um, but again, I don't want you to really worry too much and obsess about your battery temperature. It really doesn't make that much of a difference unless it's really cold out and the, and the battery is really cold. It only means, like I said, another five to six minutes at the charging station to get up to the, the, the desired charging level. Speaking of that, when you're at DC fast charger, the Tycon can get as high as 80% charged in about 22 to 23 minutes with the battery at the optimum charging temperature. Um, but then that 80 to 100% takes longer than it took you to get from 5% to 80%. That's because DC fast charging um, puts so much power into the battery all of the cars start to throttle down their charging rate as the, um, uh, the battery state of charge increases. As a matter of fact, even with a perfect battery temperature, um, the, the, the Tycon will only hold the 270 top charging rate for a short window of time. And it immediately starts ramping down, uh, I think once it gets to somewhere around 25% or 25, 30% state of charge, it starts ramping down. By the time you get up to 80% to, to charge, it's, it's, it's not nearly the full charging rate, but that's the case with all electric vehicles. As, as the charge rate gets close to 100%, the, the 
um, the, as the state of charge gets close to 100%, the battery charging rate has to slow down. Think of it as pouring a, um, a pitcher into a little glass. You can pour it really quickly until you get to close to the top, then you kind of slow it up because you don't want to spill your water. With a battery, you don't want to spill that electricity. Bad things happen. So all the cars throttle it down. I suggest when you're going to a DC fast charger, unless you absolutely need 100% of your rage to make it to your destination, unplug when you get to somewhere around 70 or 80% um, because you're just wasting your time after that. It takes long to charge the car uh, at those high state of charges. Uh, there's also level two public chargers and they work the same as DC fast chargers. If you're on a network, you either need to have an app or an RFID card. Uh, I suggest you take a look at um, uh, apps like PlugShare or Chargeway. Take a look and see what networks are in the area that you live because these different DC fast charge networks, Electrify America, ChargePoint, EVgo, GreenLots, uh, they're regional in many instances. So what I have here in New Jersey, the most of the, the DC fast charger are, are either EVgo or Electrify America. Where you live, it could be different. So you definitely want to take a look at what networks are in your area so you can sign up. You want to have a relationship with the network before you pull in uh, because it speeds things up. If you don't have that relationship, you have to either call a 1-800 number or swipe a credit card and that complicates things. Now, this is a 2020 Porsche Taycan. In 2021, uh, the Taycans are coming out with a new feature called plug-in charge, and that really simplifies charging. Uh, this car doesn't have it, but if you pull up to a DC fast charger in, in Electrify America, um, you just pull up and plug the car in and it automatically communicates and initiates the charging session. You don't need to swipe an RFID card, open up your at, app, turn the, 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 the station on. Uh, but that's something that we're gonna probably do a deep dive in at a, at a later point in time. Uh, for now, this car doesn't have that, but it's, it's definitely an awesome feature. If you get a 2021 Taycan, you don't have to fumble with uh, network cards or, or, or uh, RFIDs and uh, apps. You just pull up to the station, plug the vehicle in, it starts charging. There's one other thing I'd like to point out. Porsche has an option that they call the onboard 150 kilowatt, 400 volt DC fast charger. And it's a $460 option on the Taycan. And most dealers are probably going to recommend that you get that option because they're going to say, oh, you want to charge your Taycan as fast as possible. The thing is, the Taycan's based on an 800 volt battery system and the high speed chargers that are in this country that are more than 50 kilowatts, almost all operate on an 800 volt system. Uh, now the Taycan has electronics built into the car that they can also charge at Fifth at 400 volt DC fast chargers. Uh, and that's what this option is about. Well, if you go to a 400 uh, d volt DC fast charger, uh, you wanna charge fast. You don't wanna be stuck at the uh, 50 kilowatt limit that the Taycan comes with. Now, this gets a little confusing here. When you're charging on an 800 volt uh, DC fast charger, it has a 270 kilowatt DC fast charge limit, the Taycan does. When you're charging at a 400 volt DC fast charger, the limit is only 50 kilowatts. So Porsche sells this option, the onboard 150 kilowatt, 400 volt DC fast charger, so that if you come across a 400 volt DC fast charger, which you don't know if they're 400 volt or 800 volt, then you can charge up to 150 kilowatts. So most people tick that box and pay the $460. The problem is there are no DC fast chargers in North America that are based on 400 volts and can deliver more than 50 kilowatts. So if you get this option, I can guarantee you, you will never use it. Um, the high speed DC fast chargers today that are being installed that deliver more than 50 kilowatts, all are based on 800 volt systems. So uh, the Porsche has this option because in Europe, there are some charging stations that are 400 volt based that can deliver more than 50 kilowatts. But here in North America, that's not the case. So you definitely don't wanna pay that $460. The problem is even the dealers don't know this. They don't understand charging. So they might recommend you get that option. And I'm telling you, if you do, you're never gonna use it. The last thing I wanna talk about 
public charging is cost. Now, cost varies greatly with electric vehicle charging in public. Uh, it's not like gas where, you know, the gas station might be 10 cents more a gallon down the road. Uh, you know, for the most part, they're kind, there's kind of price parity. I know there's a few stations that might cost a lot more, but they're, you know, it's, it's cents per gallon. With, with electric car charging in public, you can pay $15 to charge your Taycan at a, at a charging station. You can go to another one down the block and it could be $50. That's how much of a difference it is. So what you want to do is, as I mentioned earlier, download some of the apps like PlugShare or Chargeway, and they'll tell you how much it costs to charge at that charging station. Uh, and before you go and plug in, just take a look. Uh, the, the, the thing is, if the charger's along your route and it's inconvenient to go to another, you're going to end up probably stopping there and paying, paying whatever they charge you. But you should be cognizant of the fact that the price of uh, electricity to use these charging stations varies greatly from network to network. Electrify America has one price, EVgo has another choice, price. ChargePoint has different prices on all of their chargers because they sell the stations to property owners and property owners are then allowed to set the price. ChargePoint has no control over what they charge. Some of the property owners let you charge for free because they use it as an amenity to get you on their property and then shop in their stores, eat in their restaurants. But some of the property owners have outrageous prices set. So definitely take a look at that. Know what you're paying before you go to a public level two or DC fast charger with your Tycon. For DC fast charging, there's actually three different connectors that are used. It's unlike level one and level two charging where Everybody uses this J1772 connector here in North America, except Tesla, they have their own proprietary connector. For DC fast charging, there's the Tesla connector. There is what the Porsche uses called CCS or the combined charging system. Porsche and pretty much every manufacturer uses that except for Nissan and Mitsubishi currently. Um, however, Nissan just decided with their next electric vehicle that's coming out this year, the Aria, they have left the standard that they were using, which is called Chatamo, and went to CCS. Now I'm explaining this because the DC fast chargers that you encounter, most of them are gonna have two connectors on them. One is the CCS connector, which you use for the Taycan, and the other one is a Chatamo. You can't use that connector. You can't, there's not even an adapter that allows you to use a, ch a, a Chatamo charger on uh, a CCS uh, vehicle. Now, one of the reasons why I'm pointing this out is there are some DC fast chargers out there that have only a Chatamo connector. You don't want to pull up relying, expecting to charge there, relying on that, and then you can't. So that's another reason to download apps like PlugShare and Chargeway. They tell you what connector is at each station. Now, um, the Electrify America network, uh, which is the largest DC fast charging network right now in the country, um, they have predominantly all CCS plugs. Usually at every location, there's one Chatamo plug um, and seven or eight uh, CCS plugs. Uh, but you just have to be cognizant of the fact that there are connectors out there that you cannot use. And those are the Chatamo connectors. Uh, so make sure before you pull into a DC fast charging station, uh, make sure you know that it has the CCS connector. Now the Taycan has two charge ports. It's the only electric vehicle that has two charge ports, one on the left fender and one on the right fender. The left fender just does level one and level two charging with the J1772 connector. The charge port on the right side of the vehicle does both. You can use a regular J1772 in there to charge the car, or you can use a DC fast charger to charge on that side. You just have to flip a little tab that's below the J1772 port down and open up the full port so that the CCS connector can snap in. So we're gonna first talk about home charging with your Porsche Taycan and the equipment that comes with the vehicle. Now the Porsche Taycan comes with a charger called the mobile charger. That's the standard charger. It comes with every Taycan free. You don't have to pay any extra for it. It's a 9.6 kilowatt charger and it can charge the car 
are from either a level one or a level two source. Now, when you're charging from a level one source, it's not a 9.6 kilowatt charger. It'll deliver somewhere around one kilowatt to the car. And as I said earlier, it will take very long to charge your Taycan. Um, so you're probably gonna wanna charge from the level two source. Now, luckily, the charger that Porsche gives you with the vehicle has adapters so you can plug it into either a household outlet or a 240 volt dedicated high powered outlet, which you would probably wanna install in your garage. Now, what I have here is the optional charging equipment called the Mobile Charger Connect, because this is what was uh, outfitted with the vehicle that I have on press loan. It's a $1,120 option. So it's an expensive option and it won't charge your car any quicker than the standard mobile charger does. The difference with this charger is it's Wi-Fi enabled and it has some smart charging features. Um, so that's what you pay for. Uh, what I understand some Porsche dealers actually just bundle it in with every car. You don't have a choice. You have to get this with your car. Uh, that's something for you to negotiate with your dealer. You might want the mobile uh, charger connect anyway, but uh, from what I understand, in some instances, you get it with the car whether you want it or not. But you should know the standard charger, the mobile charger, will charge your car just as fast as the mobile charger connect will. Let's take a look at it. So it comes in this nice carrying case because this is a mobile charger. You can unplug it and take it with you uh, and plug in somewhere else. If you have a summer home or winter home and you install an outlet there for this, you can, you can use it in, in uh, both of those locations. So this is the body of the unit. The standard charger, the mobile charger that I talked about before, is basically the same size, but it's not as thick as this. It's only about this wide. So it's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to move around, but basically it looks the same as this. And as I said, the charging power is the same. Now, if you take a look at the unit, on the bottom is where the charging cable comes the connector comes out of this is what you plug in your car now it only has an eight foot cable right off the bat the first thing I see is that I'm not a fan of cables that are this short because you really have to pair um, where you put your outlet in to very close to the charge port now luckily the Taycan has charge ports on both sides of the vehicle for the level one and level two charging um, it, uh, if you're when you're DC fast charging you have to use the connector on the right side of the vehicle the uh, the out inlet on the right side of the vehicle but when you're charging level one or level two you can use either inlet on the left side of the vehicle or the right side of the vehicle so that makes it a little bit easier to deal with a short cable like this but um, I recommend for home charging equipment personally I like to see the cable be at least 20 feet long um, so that way you can kind of reach anywhere you want in the garage. Uh, you might not want to pull straight in one day. You might want to back in. Uh, in this case where I have these, uh, my outlets installed, uh, I would have to pull the, my Tycon in uh, forward, nose in, in order for this to reach the, uh, the, the inlet. If I were to back the vehicle in, this would not reach the front of the car, which would be, you know, further away from the this wall. Now, I know you can install your outlet wherever you want. You can pair it with where your charge port's gonna be, but still, it's much more convenient, in my opinion, to have a large, a longer charging cord. This is um, one ding that I'm gonna give this, this unit here. Um, now, as far as charging level one and level two, it comes with two adapters. This is the level one adapter. As you can tell, that's a regular household outlet. It's called a NEMA 515. Um, it plugs into any regular household outlet like this one here. And then the unit attaches here. So what you do is, on the opposite side of where the connector is, you take your adapter, you slide it in. Then you have to push this in a little bit and it, it slides further down. I'm sorry, there it is. And then, and it's like a two-step to snap it in. Now, they also provide 
a little screw and an Allen wrench that you can put in this little hole here. If you don't plan on swapping this out for the different adapters, you can, you can screw it in and it, and it won't accidentally uh, pop out, which I don't think it'll accidentally pop out anyway. This is, has a very robust design with how this snaps in. Um, so that's for level one charging. If you want to charge on level two, which is the faster charging, it comes with this adapter and a NEMA 1450 uh, uh, plug, uh, like I have behind me here. Now, a NEMA 1450 plug needs to be on a dedicated 50 amp circuit, and it can deliver a maximum of 40 amps uh, to the vehicle. And in the case of the, uh, the mobile charger and mobile charger connect, that's the most that they can deliver to the vehicle is 40 amps, which is 9.6 kilowatts. Now the Tycon can accept up to 11 kilowatts of power from a level two source. So the, the, the charging equipment that Porsche provides for home charging cannot deliver the full power that the Tycon can accept. If you wanted to charge your vehicle at the full power, you'd have to get a third party charger like the chargers I put behind me here for a reason. This is the NLX Juice Box 48. That can deliver uh, up, up to 48 amps, which is more than 11 kilowatts. This is the Charge Point Home Flex. This can deliver up to 50 amps to the vehicle. Again, it will deliver more than the maximum 11 kilowatts that the Tycon can accept. And just so you know, both of these chargers are more than $400 less than the Porsche uh, mobile charger connect costs. So that's something to consider there. You don't need to buy Porsche's charging equipment to tar charge the Taycan. Any level two charger that you can buy here in North America has the same connector, which is the, uh, the J1772. Both of these have the same connector. Um, all the charging equipment you buy here in North America will have that uh, connector. So you don't have to worry about buying a charger that has the wrong connector. In Europe, they use a different connector, but I don't think you'd be shopping uh, on European websites to buy your charging equipment for uh, here in the US and Canada. Uh, so basically, the only advantage that I can see of the uh, mobile charger connect is that it's Wi-Fi enabled and you can pair it with your uh, My Porsche app. And that will give you the, um, uh, it connects to the charger and from your app, you can get the battery status of your car. You can start and stop a charging session. You can start preconditioning on the car, which is warming up the cabin and the battery. And you can also set a schedule to charge the car uh, on certain times. Uh, but these chargers here will also allow you to do many of those features. It won't co uh, uh, communicate with the car to start uh, preconditioning, but you could set schedules and you can start and stop charging sessions. Uh, so, you know, the, the, while the uh, uh, mobile charger connect is a nice unit, uh, it's a powerful unit, um, the value isn't really there in my opinion as far as getting uh, level two charging equipment for your Taycan. Uh, but some people like it because it's Porsche branded and hey, you could also get the charging dock uh, which is um, somewhere around $500 more. I think it might even be a little more. I tried to look the price up online. I couldn't find it. Basically what the Porsche charging dock is, is a housing for this unit. And uh, you mount it on the wall and this snaps into that and it gives it a nice pretty look. It doesn't add any value to the charger as far as it doesn't charge faster. Uh, it's really just for looks. Um, and uh, this one actually, the, both the mobile charger and the mobile charger connect already comes with a, um, a wall mount uh, so that you can snap it in and hold it. Now, it doesn't look as pretty as the Porsche charging dock, but this comes with the units and basically uh, this snaps into the back here and then this unit will snap into this, put the cable in like that and it hangs on the wall. So, um, you know, it already comes with uh, a, a wall mounting system. So, you know, the charging dock that uh, poor shells is really uh, just for somebody that wants their garage to really look beautiful and be uh, branded Porsche. Uh, I probably wouldn't get that 
if I got the uh, mobile charger connect or if I just use the mobile charger that comes with the car, I would just mount it uh, on the wall like this. Now, one thing to note is the, um, let, me un let me snap this out. Because the plug c attaches to the top of the uh, charger, let's put that in there. Okay. So now you have to understand where you, where you install your NEMA 1450 outlet. Th this unit is going to be much lower. So if, you, if, you, if I were to put this here, you see how low it would be D down to, by the ground? What I would recommend is that you install your uh, NEMA 1450 outlet a little bit higher. So when you, when you plug it in, you can then have this mounted like here on the wall so you could see it. You don't want this weighed down by the floor because uh, then you won't be able to read any of the information that it provides. And it does provide some information when you plug the car in. You can also set it so that there's a pin, a four digit pin. Uh, if this was to be installed in an area where say um, other people, a, a common garage, you'd want to be able to set it so nobody else can, can use your charger. Uh, so the, it Porsche allows you to set a pin on this, a four digit pin, so that you can only have access to it yourself. Now you can bypass that when you, when you turn the charger on for the first time, you can bypass the pin. Cause if you're in your own private garage, you don't need to be entering uh, a four digit pin every time you need to plug the vehicle in. Okay. So we have installed the mounting bracket and the connector holster for the mobile charger connect. Let's see how it gets snapped into place. First, what you want to do is take the lower cable and feed it through that opening and drop the connector in. Then snap it into place and you're going to want to plug it into your NEMA 1450 outlet. Once you snap the body of the unit into the holder and feed the cable through this little organizer here, don't forget to close this like I just did in the video and then holster your connector. One thing I noticed about this connector holster, many connector holsters that are remote like this, um, chargers either have an integrated connector holster where it's built into the unit uh, or a remote connector holster like this where you then mount it separately from the unit itself. So this remote connector holster doesn't have a little lip off the front of it, which allows you to wrap the cable around the top and hold the cable up there. Um, this will just slide off. Now, in the case of the, the, the mobile charger connect, the cable's only eight feet long, so you really don't need to loop it around that much. That's not that bad, um, but uh, you know, I I'd still would prefer if you were able to just loop it around here once to keep this from uh, somebody tripping over it if it was out there or whatever. Um, that's not the best design in my opinion. So at this point, uh, if you had a pin enabled on the unit, you would enter your four digit pin to turn it on so you could use it. But as I said, during the initial setup period, when you first plug this charger in, now this was obviously set up because other people have used it before I have, uh, it, there's like a four or five step process. When you first uh, power it up, you have to tell it, um, what language it, you want to use, uh, what country you're in. Uh, you also have to uh, uh, tell it what circuit it's on. Uh, they want to make sure that this is on a 50 amp circuit so that it can deliver the, the full 40 amps. If this was being plugged into a circuit that um, wasn't 50 amps, you'd want to tell the, the, the charger that so it didn't deliver more power than what the circuit can provide. Um, they also ask you to give their permission, your permission to, uh, um, for them to have your data because th this being a Wi-Fi connected unit, um, I guess Porsche does have the ability to capture that data, your charging history and things like that. Um, so you have to give them permission to have access to your data. Um, that's the, the only charger that I know of that 
ask for that permission, but um, that's how it works. The, that wouldn't happen with the basic mobile charger that comes with free with the car, as I mentioned earlier. That's not a Wi-Fi connected car uh, charger. It uh, has the same power, but it doesn't have the Wi-Fi connection. You can't do things, see like your battery status and start and stop the, remotely and look at your previous charging sessions and things like that. Uh, that's what you're paying for with the charger, uh, the mobile charger connect. The Taycan 4S doesn't have the nifty automatic charge port door opener that the Turbo and Turbo S has. It has just a regular standard, push it in and it pops open charge point flat. Now when you put your connector in, you'll notice the ring here starts to blink white. That means that it's the charger is communicating with the car and trying to establish a connection. Once it does, the ring then turns to green blinking. That means that the car is actively charging. Once the car finish, finishes charging, that green circle is going to stop blinking and remain green. Now, if you plug your car in and that circle is blue, that means the car is connected to a charger, but that you've set a schedule for a specific time for the car to charge. That's delayed charging. People do that when they have a time of use plan for their, uh, elect from their electric provider, and it gives them a lower price for electricity if they charge during off-peak times. It's usually overnight. There's other reasons why some people might set a delayed schedule if they wanna have the car finish charging right before they're going to leave uh, for work in the morning. That sometimes will have the, make the battery warmer if it's in the winter because the battery warms up while it's charging. But most of the time when you have a delayed schedule set, it's because you wanna take advantage of time of use charging plan. Now, the one thing that I will caution you about, if you have a delayed um, charging plan set and you're in public and you're using a public charging station, don't forget that you have the delayed charging set because if you plug the charger in and don't look at the, at, at the ring and don't change your schedule, the car won't start charging. You might walk away, come back a few hours later and realize your car hasn't charged. There's one more color that you can see. Uh, if that ring is red, that means there is some sort of fault in the car or the charger or there's a communication error and the car isn't charging. So one more thing I wanna point out. When the car is locked, which I'm gonna do right now, when the car is locked, you cannot either press this tab to pull the connector out or stop the charging session. This button here, you press first to stop the charging session and then you remove the connector. But if the car is locked, you can't do that. The reason for that is if, you're, if you are charging in a public environment, Somebody can't come by and turn your car's charging off. Once you unlock the car door, like I just did, now when you press this button, the charging stops and you can remove your connector. So I mentioned earlier that I was going to tell you how you can charge your Taycan from a Tesla wall connector or destination charger. Here we go. Now, Tesla uses a proprietary connector. It's different than what every other electric vehicle uses. So you can't just plug your Taycan into a uh, Tesla uh, destination charger or wall connector without an adapter. Luckily, com there's companies out there that make them. There's a company called Lectron, there's Tesla Tap, which I have here. Tesla Tap actually has two different products that are, uh, uh, one of them's brand new to the market. This one just came out uh, just a couple of weeks ago and it's really great. It's small and compact uh, and, uh, and uh, I tested it out on the Taycan and it definitely works. Um, but let's take a quick look at the Tesla connector. I happen to have a Tesla wall connector here and this is what the Tesla connector looks like. As you can tell, it's much smaller than the J1772 connector that all the electric vehicles other than Tesla uses um, and what you would need to do is have a connector that you could either uh, that you could plug into your your Tesla connector and then into your Taycan now both of these connect connectors do that uh, I actually have a uh, 
dedicated video here on my channel that explains how you use them in depth. And I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. So if you want to take a look at a more in-depth uh, view of how you use these, uh, check out that video. But for now, I'm going to quickly go over it. Basically, you would get either one of these type of adapters or this small, elegant adapter, which I like a lot better, but it, obviously it's going to cost more. What you do is plug your, um, oops, plug your Tesla connector into that. And then you plug this into your Tycon. Now, these have locks on them, uh, on the, the, the connector tab. You can see right there, there's a little hole that you can put a little lock in. This has two locks, so nobody can steal this if you're at a public destination charger somewhere. You definitely want to make sure that the connector can't be unlocked and stolen, uh, or the fact that somebody could just unplug you in the middle of a charging session and now all of a sudden you can't charge the car, you know, um, or the car's not charging. Uh, so basically, uh, these cost anywhere between $149 and up to, up to $250. But the one thing I want you to be cognizant of, of since the Tycon can accept a lot of power and Tesla charging stations, the wall connector or the destination chargers, can deliver a lot of power. You don't want the charger sending a lot of power to the car and the adapter in the middle being a weak link that can't accept that much power. So these are available in different amperage. There's ones that can accept 40 amps, there's some that accept 50 amps, some that accept 60 amps. Um, you understand that the Tycon can accept uh, 11 kilowatts, which is about 48 amps of power and the Tesla charger, some of them can deliver up to 80 amps. Now they'll only deliver what the car calls for. So if you ever plug your Tycon into a very powerful charging station, you don't have to worry about it because the car says, um, I can accept 11 kilowatts, what can you give me? The station says, well, I can do even more than that, so I'll give you the 11 kilowatts, that's all you want. Um, so you don't want 11 kilowatts coming from the charger and going into the car and a device in the middle that can only accept seven kilowatts. Um, so what you definitely want to do is make sure you get one of these that's either a 50 amp or a 60 amp version for your Tycon, and that way you'll know you're never going to have any problems if you use one in public um, and, and, and it has delivering more power to the car than what the uh, connector can handle. Now, Tesla has thousands of destination chargers around North America at hotels, um, uh, golf courses, uh, destinations like ski resorts, wineries. Uh, they actually have done a really great job building out this incredible network for Tesla vehicles to use. Um, and with these adapters, you can use it also. Now, the one, the one thing I will tell you is these are on private property and they're controlled by the property owners. Tesla does not control them. So you always have to ask permission. If you're going to a hotel, if you're going to a, 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 some type of a public destination, uh, if it's in a big parking lot and it's for all the customers, that's fine. But if you're particularly hotels, many of the places want you to ask permission or tell them you're using the charger and they want you to be a customer. You can't just pull up to a hotel if you're not staying there and plug in and walk away and come back eight hours later. You need to ask the management, but if you really need to use them and you're nice and you say, look, I'm in a little bit of a jam, can I charge here a few hours? What I've found is that most places allow you to do it. So I took the Tycon to a local hotel and did just that. I tested out both the, um, uh, the larger version of this and also this new Tesla Tap Mini. Both of them charge the car, car flawlessly. And uh, you know I know that there's not gonna be any problems using this equipment with your Tycon as long as you have it set to the right amperage and you have it so that it can actually deliver the amount of power, power that your Tycon's gonna take. Now the last thing I have to tell you is no, you can't use Tesla superchargers. Tesla DC fast chargers are called superchargers. Tesla has many of them all over the country. Now with this adapter, you would be able to plug the supercharger in and plug into your Tycon, but it's not gonna work because the superchargers have a communication process. They talk to the car and they confirm that yes, it's a Tesla and that you're allowed to charge here. Uh, the destination chargers don't do that yet. In the future, there's a new Wi-Fi version that it might do that, 
But for now, all the, the, the stations that are out there, you can, you can use as long as you get permission from the property owner. But unfortunately, no, you cannot use Tesla superchargers because the communication process is going to say, hey, you're a Porsche, you can't charge here. The Porsche Taycan in any trim level is an outstanding electric vehicle and a blast to drive. But in order to drive it, you have to charge it. And we hope this video helped you better understand how to charge the Porsche Taycan. If you have any questions, if there's anything we missed, please leave them in the comment section below. We'll try to get answers to all of your questions. That's it for today. We hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.